this? Because really, if you think about learning to implement a new curriculum or today learning about the next generation science standards, mm -hmm. as a teacher, you're actually in a learner role. Yes. And learning yes. is the same regardless of age. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's why the five E's are so important, universal, and really um, why they're still important and relevant today. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I think it's important that they've evolved. Mm -hmm. I mean, we really aren't doing the same no. thing we were doing in the late 80s. But I think we're doing a better version, a more informed version, mm -hmm. and certainly a version that we've conducted research on. Yes. And the findings, as we're able to particularly do our um, control studies, where we have a really good comparison, mm -hmm. um, are starting to demonstrate a real power of the five E's. One of the interesting ones is in a fairly small study that was done outside of BSCS, looking at the implementation of the NAH modules mm -hmm. that use the five E's in a fairly limited sense because they're short and um, there's some content constraints with right. trying to employ the five E's in those modules. Mm -hmm. And what the researcher found was as long as teachers did most, like about three out of five parts of the five E's in order, student learning was statistically noticeably better, statistically significant. And as compared with? Teachers who taught the lessons in an isolated manner. Oh, like a very didactic. Partly thinking. didactic, but partly just um, just taking the explore activity because they liked the activity of it. Yes. And treating it a lot like non-5e curriculum materials mm -hmm. are treated, where each lesson is a discrete piece and you can put them together however you want. Yes, and you can mix and match in the order mm -hmm. and the sequence. Right. It doesn't matter. And that, that same piece of research also found that when all lessons were done, the whole 5e mm -hmm. flow, then you saw yet another jump in learning. Um, and we've continued to see those kind of studies uh, show significant impact, like the study we recently completed in the state of Washington with teachers implementing BSCS Science and Inquiry Approach, mm -hmm. which is a high school multidisciplinary program. They only It's a three-year program, but the teachers did it for two years, ninth and tenth grade. And by the end of tenth grade, kids were performing the equivalent of four months ahead of their peers who were in what was called the business as usual curriculum. That's impressive. Yeah. Because if you play that over a 12-year mm -hmm. experience right. from kindergarten to high school, four months for every two years, mm -hmm. That would make a big difference in how much science you learned and how scientifically li literate you were by the time you graduated. Yes, exactly, which would be important for students at any age. And I think, wouldn't you argue that um, the teachers often learn as much as their students do, sometimes about the science, but definitely about teaching and learning? Yes, absolutely. And one of the things I was really gratified by was when um, How People Learn came out, mm -hmm. that the findings in How People Learn we didn't have to do anything. They dovetailed right. perfectly with the intent, the constructivist ideas that were already embedded in our materials. In the five E's. Yes. And by that time, our professional development. Yes, exactly. So one of the things I'd, I'd use as evidence about teachers learning as much, in the project we completed a couple of years ago down in Arizona where we were trying to increase teachers' pedagogical content mm -hmm. knowledge through the mm -hmm. use of curriculum materials with the five E's, um, we did a couple measures. We did a content measure of teacher's knowledge over time, and we did a measure of their teaching practice, mm -hmm. and both had statistically significant wow. increases over the life of the project, even though the teachers felt like the main thing that had changed was the implementation of the curriculum, mm. and yet their own content knowledge and their instructional strategies in terms of being aligned with research about high-quality instruction right. had both increased right. dramatically. Yeah. And I do think it's, once again, uh, to say it's gratifying for all of us yeah. who were there at the beginning and worked as a team. And really, I would say we spent five to six years refining, mm -hmm. revising, figuring out the best way Struggling to field with. testing. <laughs> yes, exactly. Definitely wrestling with these ideas about how best to structure the units, the modules, mm -hmm. so that teachers would understand what the sequence looked like and that they would be willing to give their students enough time yes. to struggle with these ideas and really come up with what mm -hmm. the science concepts were all about. Well, and as we move into this next era with the Common Core, mm -hmm. with the Next Gen Standards, with STEM instead of science, yes, right. I really hope your idea about time takes hold. I fear that it won't, 
Mm -hmm. I think it's very counterintuitive for people to know that if you spend more time on less, kids actually learn more. But if we teach as research tells us, mm -hmm. we should teach because it's based on how we learn, right. we'll make a difference in what kids know. And I think BSCS has played a big role in understanding what that means in terms of instruction and curriculum. So Nancy, who would have known 26 years ago that the five E's would have had such widespread recognition, but more importantly, such significant impact in changing the quality of teaching and learning.